We're gonna start with the Cancer Ascendant, right? Cancer is the fourth sign, the mother, basically. Um, right, so we're gonna talk about the Cancer Ascendant. As you see right here, we got Leo. Second house cusp, we got Virgo. Third house cusp, we got Libra right here. We got Scorpio right here on the fifth. Sagittarius on the sixth house cusp. Capricorn on the seventh. Aquarius eighth. Pisces ninth. Aries is the tenth house. Taurus is going to be the 11th house and Gemini is going to be 12th. Now, I've stated in my videos before that we're going to go by whole sign houses for this example. The reason being is because we want to be able to reach more people. Um, normally, a lot of Western astrologers use Placidus, but for this example, we're going to use whole signs. The reason being is we don't want any... Um, it's still going to resonate with you guys first if, if you're used to using Placidus, but we don't want intercepted signs or duplicated signs and what that means is duplicated signs will just mean that we might have for instance cancer on the first house and also it may be on the second house cusp for certain people or any sign in the zodiac it, it could be on two house cusps if it's a duplicated um sign or we don't want any interception signs basically where you have an energy or a sign that's missing because it's intercepted it's in between two different house cusps so say for instance if leo matter of fact was in between this this house cusp and it wasn't connected to the third house or the second house, right? So this is the reason why we're gonna use whole sign houses is because we wanna reach more people, right? So Cancer Ascendant, right? So Cancer Ascendant, Cancer is ruled by the moon. The moon deals with emotions, right? And when we think about the first house, as this is the house that represents you, it's like the mask that we wear, it's the physical appearance. I like to say it's how we act since it's the mask that we wear. Uh, cancer is a sign of the mother, so you have more maternal energy in terms of how you give off. You could be very sensitive. A lot of times, this is also going to be your outlook on life and how others see you. So they'll see you as someone who's very caring, someone who's also very protective. And you know, you guys wear your heart on your sleeve, basically. You know, you more so, I would think, um, go by how you feel. So being that you come off as the mother, even if you're a man, we're talking about. We're not talking about gender. We're not talking about sex. We're just talking about energy wise. With a Cancer Ascendant, you come off very nurturing, right? So in your seventh house, opposite of that, this is your house of partnerships and relationships. You're gonna attract, right? Capricornic type of people. You may feel a bit more restricted in this area um, with your partnerships, like you have to work a bit harder. Even marriage um, can come a bit later. As Capricorn is ruled by Saturn, Saturn represents restrictions, limitations. It doesn't mean that it won't happen, it just means that it may take a bit more time when you f may feel like you have to work a bit more harder in your relationship. Being that you could be nurturing, you know, sensitive, emotional, caring. You know, Capricorn is not really an emotional sign, it's more practical, right? So your relationships can help you uh, kind of, you know, like step into that energy of just being a more practical one, like I just said. And you're actually supposed to be, even though you come off as the mother, you have to be a bit more responsible and reliable in your partnership. You can also attract older people, elders, or just people who are more mature, right? So being that you're coming off as the responsible one, the reliable one, the authority of your relationships, you got to make sure that you're balancing out being able to nurture yourself. Cancer is nurturing energy. First house represents you. If you are overly nurturing yourself you need to get back to being responsible for your relationships you know that's the way that we look at how the polarities balance out we're gonna move on to leo on the second house cusp versus aquarius on the eighth house cusp let's start with aquarius in the eighth then we're gonna relate it back to the second house with leo these are two they call them sister signs but two uh polar polarizing energies basically two opposite energies if i said that correctly so um, this is your intimate life right here, the eighth house. This deals with sex and intimacy. Also shared resources, right? Joint resources. Um, so when you have Aquarius here, Aquarius is very unique. It's very different. You may feel a bit more alienated in your intimacy. You feel like the eyeball out. Um, you also may feel like you need freedom in this area because you maybe you don't fit in with people that you are intimate with. Or you may feel a bit more detachment, right? In this area. So being that you feel maybe a bit like aloof in your intimate life, right um this is why opposite of that in the second house second house represents values in our money this is why you want to be seen for your value because when you're intimate with people you feel a bit aloof and different and unique a bit quirky right it's coming to the house of values and money so if you're being seen too much 
when we balancing this out, right? You may have planets or certain other things that may change the energy to where you're vibrating on different polarities more. Say if you have different planets in certain houses, this can amplify that energy more. Now, if you're being seen too much for your values, right? Because it's saying you want to be seen for your values or you value being seen, um, then you need to go towards, if you're doing this too much, you need to go towards eighth house. Of course, it represents progress as well. You need to go back to progressing in your intimate life, right? With those intimate partners. And it doesn't always have to be sexual. It could just be people who you are close to on an intimate level. But it can be sex as well. So that's how you balance out these areas. Um, you may also take or have a lot of pride um, in your possessions when you have Leo in the second house. You may um, like to show off with your resources as well. That could be money or just possessions that you have. So that's just something to keep in mind as well. We got Virgo in the third house. Versus Pisces on the ninth house. Um, we're going to balance out these energies. So, ninth house represents a couple different things. It represents your father, it represents your beliefs, spirituality, um, higher philosophies, long distance journeys. Versus third house, which represents short distance journeys, uh, your neighborhood. It represents siblings, it represents relatives like aunts, uncles, cousins. Um, I don't know, I think I just said neighbors, but it represents that as well, too. And you're, just how you think and how you communicate. So, wherever you got Pisces at, you got it in your ninth house. So, Pisces is where you self-sacrifice. I've told you guys before. So, at times, you sacrifice the things that you believe in. You sacrifice your beliefs. So, being that you sacrifice your beliefs, you need to self-improve and work, which is Virgo energy, on your communication and your thoughts. How you express yourself. Um, Virgo deals with self-improvement. Pisces deals with self-sacrifice. All right? Um, so also ninth house, it deals with, um, our, like I said, it, I told you it deals with, um, long distance journeys. So Pisces is also a very giving energy. You may give and also fantasize because Pisces kind of can deal with, it's ruled by Neptune, it can deal with dreams. So you may fantasize and also give your energy towards like long distance travels, maybe traveling overseas, right? So if you're doing that. Then you need to self-improve with your um in areas that deal with your neighborhood, your relatives. Um, make sure you're still improving in this area and that you're not losing connection, basically. Now, um, Virgo could be a very critical energy, right? Virgo represents a very, very nitpicky, very judgmental type of energy. When it's coming into the house of your mind, you can, you guys can be very um yeah, just critical, right? You, you can analyze every little thing. Um, even since it's coming to the house of relatives, neighbors, siblings, aunts, uncles, cousins, you may be a bit judgmental in this area, right? So if you're being too overly judgmental and critical of these people, of these individuals, be mindful of that and try to work on it because you can attract that same energy you're giving off. There may be some things also too that you don't know about your father. Um, Ninth house represents the father. Pisces represents illusions. Uh, he may have been the type that put up facades, maybe a certain parts of himself that he didn't know, so in return you didn't know him as well. Um, you know, usually that's how the energy shows up as well. But he could also be a very giving person, but yeah, it's just some things to where there could be some illusions around him and you knowing him. Let's go to Libra on the 4th versus Aries on the 10th. So when we got uh, Libra on the 4th and Aries on the 10th house, 4th house is your private life. 10th house is your public image, your reputation, your career. This is home as well, and your feelings as well, too. So, um, 10th house will go, we'll jump up to the 10th house. You got Aries here, right? You need to be very initiating, even independent, um, and the head, the leader of your career, basically. Uh, you may find that you have, um, 10th house represents authority figures like bosses and supervisors. So you may find that you guys, um, attract some type of competitiveness, uh, it will either play out through like conflicts and quarrels or it could be just a bit of selfishness that you would attract. So you may move more independent, right, in your career, in your in the world, because this house can represent the world too, in your public image. So Aries is a warrior energy, being that you guys can be the type that are going through war to kind of like be the head of your career or selfishness from other people, right? You need to make sure that you have balanced peace, harmony in your private life, in your home, because you could be going through war in the outer world and in, 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 uh, in your career. So you need to just have that that peace, which is what um, Libra represents, represents balance. You need to be balanced in your home life. Also, four fathers of your emotions. 
So for emotional fulfillment, you need to be balanced, basically. Um, if you find that you're going through war in the outer world. Uh, we'll go to Scorpio on your 5th house versus Taurus on 11th house. Let's go with the Scorpio energy in the 5th house first. All right. So uh, wherever Scorpio is at, I told you guys, it's kind of where going through transformations, evolution. You may um, also go through power struggles. Wherever Scorpio is at, you can attract fuckery. So this is coming to the house of dating. It's also coming to the house that represents children, but in particular, your first child. So you may find that people that you date and in your romantic life, it may be some power struggles. Um, it may be some manipulation here in terms of part partners that you would attract in this area. Um, so you may move more secretly in this area. And even how you self-express is saying that you self-express like a Scorpio. Um, besides your sun sign, I kind of look at the fifth house as an indication of the sun sign too because it's the house of Leo and the sun. Um, right? So this is kind of how you self-express. You come off as a Scorpio, more private, more of a mystery, more secretive, especially um, with, with people you date and also it could be with your children. You may have some issues in this area uh, with your first child. Let's see, what do I want to say? But also another, one of the positive sides that you can go through evolution, you can go through deep change with um, people that you, you love. They may help you actually transform. We'll go to your 11th house. 11th house, you got Taurus here. So 11th house Taurus, you need to make sure that you're more stable in your friendships, in your um, yeah, in your friendships with allies, you know. And the reason why you need to be that way too is because you're going through, um, you're constantly changing, you're going through transformation basically. With, with Scorpio on the fifth, you can go through transformation basically and be evolving basically. Scorpio is about death and rebirth. And it's coming to the house of, of uh, Leo self-expression so this is why you need to be stable and secure with your friends because you could be the type that's constantly changing constantly evolving basically if that makes sense so secure your friendships basically now at the same time though too you do come off as uh stable and secure and solid in your friendships i know that sounds like a paradox but you do come off that way you would come off as a stable and solid one so if you're if you're if you're too comfortable, because Taurus likes to be comfortable. If you're too comfortable in your friendships, which is the eleventh house, then just it's just saying in general, um, you know you need to go to transforming yourself. Basically, you need to go through transforming yourself. You may also have some goals and aspirations around being stable in finances, as Taurus represents this thing. These things, excuse me, and it's coming to the house that represents goals and aspirations. Lastly, with Sagittarius on the 6th house and Gemini on your 12th house, with Sagittarius here in the 6th, this can make you want to grow and expand in your work. The reason being is because Sagittarius is ruled by Jupiter. Jupiter is a planet of growth and expansion. But however, you may find that you have a harder time getting rest, which is what's represented by the 12th house. 12th house represents rest and sleep. And with Gemini here, you have more of an active and restless subconscious mind and rest state. 12th house energy, basically. It's about finding balance between these two areas in terms of you wanting to work and grow, which is the sixth house, and also what you do in private and rest and kind of like behind the scenes, which is that Gemini energy. Um, also, one thing to note is that with Gemini in your 12, you suppress your thoughts in your mind at times. Um, but you can have dreams about communication, learning, writing, media, etc. It can play out in various ways, basically. But with that being said, this is the end of the video for you Cancer Rising slash Ascendants. And make sure you subscribe, make sure you like, make sure you comment um, below any questions. Um, also, make sure you share this video, too. I appreciate it. And um, stay tuned. We following through with more videos.